Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at VPress. Now this is gonna allow you to very quickly set up a internal or external, if you prefer, uh, documentation page. Similar to like a wiki. When we covered like wiki.js in the past, it was a bit of a pain to set up just because of how many extra features there are. With the VPress, it's gonna be very simple to get up and running. Now that said, you should know it is a static site generator, uh, which means that you're not gonna get a lot of the dynamic stuff that you can get from other frameworks and tools. That said, uh, if you're creating an application, having a static site like this for your wiki is more than enough. I mean, this is the entire page or the entire wiki for using VPress and it's running in a VPress format. So this is really good if you have like a smaller tool and you just very quickly want to get up some developer documentation uh, that you can then link to if someone needs to know how to use your project or if you're hiring like new people, it's always good to have these, these readmes available uh, in a bit more of an accessible format. The benefit of this is they all use a markdown.md uh, file format, which means when you upload them to like GitHub, you'll also have a markdown here, which means if they're in your internal project and a dev goes and looks in the documentation section of your project on like the repository, they'll see markdown files. So like if I come up here and I, I'm, let's say I'm scrolling through here, I find a readme.md file, I click on it, we'll see that this automatically gets the markdown in GitHub for me, for example. So that's a neat little benefit. The other benefit is because it's static and it uses MD files, it's really fast to get up and running. So we'll go ahead, we'll take a look at this. We'll use a bit of a contrived example by creating a new Rails project. And we'll just say, this is gonna be a Rails new video. We'll CD into it and then we'll run a code dot to open this up in VS Code. Uh, but the reason why this is contrived is we'll just create like a quick little post scaffold and then we'll create like a readme page to show you how to, how to create the post scaffold or something. Just something where we can have like a bit of a working example for how this would actually look in in the real world. So we can come over here. We now have our project open in VS Code. We can now run a Rails G scaffold. We'll create a post scaffold with a title and a body of type text, just like that. That'll generate it for us. We can then do a Rails DB colon migrate command. We can run a Rails S and we can then go over to localhost port 3000 slash posts. I'll take us to the post page. We can create a new post just like that. We can edit it, destroy it, etc. basic crud stuff. Okay, so now that we have this, let's go ahead and let's create a readme for this. Now, if we come over to the VPress docs, it's pretty easy to get up and running. Uh, we click on the menu, we go over to getting started. On the getting started page right here, it tells us to npm install VPress. What we're gonna do for this is actually come into a new directory. So we can call this whatever we would like to. In my case, I'm just gonna say make dir, and I'll call this I don't know, let's just call this our guide, or let's call this wiki. Wiki makes the most sense. So we'll create a wiki directory, and then we'll cd into our wiki. Inside of our wiki, we want to do a npm init-y. It'll just initialize a uh, npm project for us. So we have that right here in our package.json. Uh, now what we want to do is we want to copy this command right here. We want to npm install-d our vpress. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, we're doing this inside of our wiki directory, not inside of our overall project because we don't want to overlap the two because uh, this is going to be its own server. We can see here we have our dev dependencies. Our scripts don't automatically get set up. There is a uh, setup wizard for you. This will do a lot for you, but I think you're probably going to learn more if you do it from scratch, or at least if you watch me do it from scratch and then you run the setup wizard, it'll create a lot of the files I'm going to create for you. Uh, it just does it, you know, in a way where it's a lot easier to manage. The way that I'm gonna do it is just gonna be uh, a quick little look at what everything does so you sort of know how this works. So for our scripts, we're gonna replace this test with the three that it has on the readme so that we can run docs colon dev. We'll come over here, we'll then run a npm run docs colon dev command. We can then come over to localhost port 5173 in our browser, and that'll take us to a 404 and a page not found. Now, the reason why this is nice is because we have our wiki and we have our docs, so if we open up this docs directory, it's gonna have a vpress folder in it. But if we right click on our docs, new file, call this index.md, we can now collapse our vpress. We can see we have in our docs folder, the .vpress and the index.md. And inside this index, we can do a home page and we'll just say, hello world. We can go ahead and save this, come over here and refresh. And now you can see we have our hello world page. So just like that, we right click, created a file, and now we have a page here. Now let's say we have to do another page. Let's do one for our posts. We can right click on our docs, new file, 
call this post.md. And in here we can do something where we say like, I don't know, I'll just copy this. Uh, this is a post scaffold doc page. Here's how this was created. We'll change this to an SH. So we can do this and I'll also full screen this. There are some extensions that I'll mention in uh, VS Code. If you come over here, you can search for like Markdown. Uh, and what these allow you to do, depending on which one you have, like I have this Markdown all-in-one uh, extension, uh, is you can come up here and click on some of these icons, depending on which one you have, and it'll allow you to preview what you're writing. So I can come down here and I can say here, uh, we'll say like uh, using the post model. Here's how you can use the post model. We can then do some backticks, use some Ruby, close the backticks. Uh, we can say def index. This will have at posts equals post dot all dot order by created at DESC, something contrived, whatever, uh, just so we get enough syntax here. And you can see as I'm typing this, it's appearing over here as well. Of course, the formatting is a little off because I'm zoomed in a lot for the sake of the video, uh, but you get the idea. And then by having this, we can then also come over to our, uh, our wiki and we can go to slash posts. And this will also have this exact same formatting over here. So if we like close this and close this and close this, uh, we can see whatever formatting we have for these pages is going to be displayed here as well. So that's sort of how we can work on it without having to like even look at it really. So that's pretty cool. But now how do we do the nav bar? Well, for the nav bar, we have to come into our wiki directory. We have our docs directory and then we have this vpress directory. We'll right click on the .vpress new file, call this config.js. Inside of this config.js, what we want to do is create a module.exports equals, and then we'll just do some braces. In here, we can do a title, say uh, Dean's wiki. Well, sure, why not? We can then do a description, just playing around. We can then do a theme config, and this is where pretty much all of the magic happens. In here, we can create a nav block. And for this, we'll say uh, it needs to have, I don't know, well, let's say two different links, right? One, two. Our first one will be some text that says this is for the home link, which takes us to a link, which is just going to be the slash. Go ahead and do that. Come over here and refresh. And now, uh, well, it's still not going to work because we have to, first of all, stop and restart the server. Uh, there we go. So now we have this this link right here, uh, but we also have a broken link because we haven't filled out the second one. So let's go ahead and let's do that. We'll say this has some text that is for our posts, which will take us to a link that is slash posts, just like that. Refresh. Now we have our home and our post page right here. We can click on posts, it takes us here and click on home that takes us back. Now, what about our side panel? Because I kind of really like the side panel they have here with all of this stuff. So how do we do that? That's pretty simple as well. We just come down here below the nav. We say sidebar colon again inside of square brackets and has some braces. And then we can say this is a text. This will take us home and it will have a link which will take us to the root. You can do another one. Oops, another one, which will be like a link to uh, sure. Let's do the post page and let's do one more, which will take us to the about page a about this will take us to slash about we'll close this we can come over here and refresh and now if we full screen this we can see we have our posts our uh, home and our about page but our about doesn't exist once again we can create our about real fast just by coming into our docs right click new file about dot oops, about dot md about me i'm dean right something like that come over here and refresh there you go uh and then we can say my prior work. Save that. Uh, here's the post page I made. And then we can take this here's or maybe I don't know, we'll highlight the post page, right? Wrap this in square brackets. And then inside of parentheses right after that, we can just tell it to go to slash posts. So if we click on this, you can see here, well, you kind of can't because it's too small, but uh, the text here becomes the name of the link or the words for the link and the stuff in parentheses right next to it becomes the actual destination. So if we click on this, it'll take us to the post page. So that's how you can link internally. And because we have the sidebar set up, what that also allows us to do is when we're on the home page, you can set the next page to be the post page. And when we go to the post page, we now see the next page is the about page because it's the next link in the sidebar. 
that's a really cool way to get those those uh, links happening between pages. And then of course you also always have the option to create custom links yourself like this, which will take you back and forth and they can kind of link to wherever you want to. In this case, I just use the uh, slash posts as an example. But yeah, this is pretty cool, pretty easy to set up. As you saw, this took what, like 10 minutes. We have a wiki page with three different pages, a nav bar and a sidebar set up that we pretty much built from scratch. Uh, and then again, alternatively, if you want to do this, uh, you can run the NPX vpress init. So we can come out of here. We're in our, our video page. We'll do another one and we'll say make dir, uh, we'll call this the guide. We'll CD into the guide. We'll run a npm init dash y. We can then run our npm install command right here for vpress. So now we're in a separate directory. This is our guide directory right here. Uh, and then in our guide directory, we can then run our npx command. So our npx vpress init, just like this. So we can tell it where to put it. We'll use the docs directory again. So this is going to go into guide slash docs. We can label this my second project. Give it a description, words. Choose a theme. You can go with the default, customize it, or use a custom theme. I'll use the default. We'll say no for the TypeScript. And then we'll say yes to add the vpress scripts to the package.json. So now we have a docs directory with a API example, an index, and a markdown example. So let's go ahead and let's run the npm uh, run docs colon dev command again. This will be from our, our uh, wizard generated stuff. Let's come over to localhost port 5173. You can see here they have a couple more examples with like some buttons and stuff. Uh, but effectively the same thing. It shows you how to use Markdown, shows you what the output is, shows you how to use custom containers uh, and some other stuff, which you can all learn from. And pretty much the only thing you have to do is come in here. This is our Markdown examples page. We can open this. And you can see down here, the output is it just running some JavaScript. The custom containers here is it just running the actual stuff instead of wrapping it inside of the backticks. So it's just using Markdown and then not using Markdown to, to that advantage like that, where you can sort of escape the Markdown if you need to. And this just lets you do uh, some neat little stuff like that. So this is definitely a good way to learn, uh, but I would say that the best way is to first create your own project and then use this as like a, a like component building example, maybe, where you pick and choose what you want to use as opposed to just you know using these without uh, sort of understanding how they work. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully this was interesting and helpful and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.